Now this area is not designed yet. This stuff just got sat down here. But we will create a little park area for sitting here. Good morning, everybody. Danny and Wanda back from Pecan Grove out in the nice, cool weather this morning, guys. We're down in the low 50s. Uh, nice for the deep south. Uh, of course, we're going to be back up in the 90s by the week, next week. But uh, anyway, we're sitting here looking at our, our green patch here. And we got a whole section we planted right here. That was the, uh, the red Russian kale and the blue night kale. And there's one more that was over yonder. I don't remember what it was. You can probably go back to the video and see. It did not come up, and this did not come up, and this did not come up. So we won't be planting those varieties anymore because it seems like they're not suited for our climate and the heat that we went through, I suppose. The rutabagas, though, look at the rutabagas. Boy, now those are pretty. They're doing really nice. Good stand to them. Um, I just we don't want to pull the leaves off the rutabagas because we're leaving them going. But you know, we talk about. Don't you look see how dry the ground still is here? This is how dry it is still here, guys. We haven't had we've had one inch of rain in over a month. You can see the ground still cracked all down in here. It uh, it's just. And these are the turnips, right? <clears throat> these are purple top turnips here, I believe. Yes. And These they, are the purple tops. We're trying to get some roots on them this year. And they go um, all the way down? Uh, yes, they go all the way down that side right yonder. And we have spots, like there's one spot with the trees Yeah. that didn't come up as well. I mean, well, it's up, up, but they're uh, there's they're no, little. The trees are sapping it. I can tell you that's what, yeah. that's what it is. The trees and are then sapping uh, these, it. These are tender greens. Uh, Florida, like they call them Florida broadleaf, broadleaf mustard. Yeah, broadleaf mustard. And we still have some of our Danny corn. Oh, and yeah. You the rabbits and stuff, and the cows love that. You can't kill that stuff. I mean, it, uh, but we're going to have to get a few leaves this morning off of this and, uh, see if we can't enjoy a little bit more of it. It's, time, it's that time of the year again. I fixed you some the other day. And they was good too. I mean, I'm gonna tell you they was good. And what is this here? Now we've got something different from. Nope, it's all the same. Mm -mm. Those are the uh, rutabagas. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the Siberian kale. This is kale. Yeah, here. this is uh from right here. Let's see, from right here back. I mean, I had a line here somewhere. Yeah, right here. From here back, that's the Siberian kale. The Siberian uh, dwarf kale. Yes, that's. Completely, you are right about that. Yeah, I knew there was another type here. Yeah, that's a Siberian dwarf kale right there, I and mean, it's doing go. It's doing good, but you see the cracks in the ground. I mean, it's just that dry. We just have had no moisture. If we could ever get any rain in here, uh, we would. These probably, would flourish. The grass is going to catch up and get ahead of the greens. Is what's going to happen. But hopefully, this cool weather will knock this grass back. And it won't uh, won't be too bad there. And we're gonna collect a few greens and look at that. That's the curly leaf. That's the Florida broadleaf mustard. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Yeah. I is... thought that was the curly leaf. Nope, I didn't plant no curly leaf. Because you see this. That's just uh, that's just mustard. There's two different types here. Okay. So we've got two types. Yeah. I'll try to get where it's really thick at. And Give it, once you take some of these off. Yeah, it starts, uh, it, it starts really expanding. These will grow like crazy. Yeah. And 
I added some turnip roots that we had in the freezer in with this the other day. Made it super fantastic. Oh, it made it really, really good. Now I gotta see if we got more in the freezer. Yeah. Now this, this end, you can see, we're all the way to the other end. Look how big these are compared to the others. We got a bug problem. We'll start here on a couple of plants. You always find your prettiest area. The bugs will find them first? The bugs will get them first, and I'm fixing to try to get them out of here. Always your prettiest ones. They go for them. Look at them. They yeah. just riddle them. But these, look, they're twice, three times bigger than any of the others. I mean, yep. look at the leaves. They are so much better down here. And this is nothing but clay. Isn't that weird that they would grow better in the clay? They grow better in the clay. Ain't that something? That is weird. My hands are cold from being wet. Gosh. I mean, these. Look at the size of some of those leaves. <sighs> that is just amazing. Okay. We got all these different kinds of seedlings here. These are. Uh, one of the types down yonder. There's like two different kinds of trees right here. These. Then we got these little short, round ones like this. They're they're laying in here everywhere. You, right just, here. you just have to kind of let right your eyes it. adjust to the leaves. Get that mm. off of there. Right here. Yeah. Mm. It's hard for me to squat down and eat my picker upper. You don't have his picker upper. We were just walking back from the garden. This is on the side of the garden where it was all grown up. Yeah, I pushed inside of the road. I pushed and cleaned out from under all these trees. And I still got this out here to go. I haven't quite finished. The pecans started falling, so I quit. I said, I don't want to mess up no pecan. So that'd be like a cardinal sin with me. Just laying in here everywhere. But you picked up a good many just walking back. Yeah, just walking back, I picked up a nice handful of them. And they're still laying all out here. Here's a here's another size that's here too. There's two different size trees here. See the difference in them right there? One's long and the other's short and skinny. Or short and fat, not short and skinny, but uh I'll come in here later on when the sun gets up and uh I'll pick up. I got that thing you just roll along the ground, picks them up. I'll do a really, really good job going through here. All the leaves, it's hard to see. When you're standing up tall like that, this is, you know, it's like eating Lay's tater chip. You can't quit. <laughs> when you see them, you got to get them, right? You got to get them because I might not see them the next time I come, you know? Anyway. When your cows are upset, they did get fed. Yeah, they got fed this morning. They, they're and it's cool. They need to go play. They need to go get out. I gave them a new pasture to go into, and they need to go get in it. Uh, man. This is just, I can't quit. We gotta got go, I can't quit. Okay. Rebarn every other one, except for the side. Rebarn every other one. Oh, uh, yeah. Got rebarn every other one of them.
get ready to put anchor bolt. We won't put the anchor bolts right in the corner because when we build our building, you know, the their corners and get in the way of the corner. So they're going in the middles? Uh, they, well, they'll go out from the corner. And then we, because of the style of the building that we're building, they even still have to go in a specific location. And you got to know that ahead of time before you start. Yes. Yes. You can't just go sticking a rebar in a, I mean, an anchor bolt or a J bolt, whatever most people want to call them. You can't just go sticking those in just anywhere. And we uh, we have poured our pipe hole and all that. That's all been done. The little pipe is a drain, right? The little pipe is a drain. I did have a little bit of a problem with the drain because I had it down below the cement on the inside tapered down. I chiseled a groove in the concrete and when I poured, I didn't realize the concrete went under the front of the pipe and it picked it up just a little bit. So most of the water will drain out if you have to. Yeah, most of it will come out of there. I, I was a little aggravated, aggravated about it, but you know. It's a smokehouse. It's a smokehouse. I got to realize we're not building ten. We got the first J-bolt in. Are you going to have any more here? I'll have one in this one right here. Okay, so none of the others. Not yet. Okay, this is what we call an anchor bolt. This is an 8-inch anchor bolt or J-bolt. Some people call them a J-bolt. I don't know why they call them a J. It's not no. It had to make a form of like a J, but it, I guess it resembles it. But we're going to be setting them. The corners, you can't put them in the corner, so we're going to come out of the corner and they'll go over on this side over here because what we're going to be doing, we're going to be putting a 2x8 down. We're going to be bolting a 2x8 down to this and then we're going to be building a log structure on top of it. And the logs won't quite, they're not quite as thick as. This right here is so that the anchor bolt will be on the inside away from the logs so that uh, they won't interfere. The logs will sit flush with the outside of the, the building here so that they shed water. And two, we may even come back and put a metal trim in here that turns down over the edges of the block so that water never gets up under the uh, under it in there to cause any kind of problems. I mean, it's overkill, but that's that's who I am. All right, this is the 2x8 that we have on top of the blocks with the anchor bolts in it. That's why I was telling you the anchor bolts needed to go toward the inside because of the way we're building it. All right, we have now started constructing our log look here. Uh, these were some timbers that Mr. Tim had gotten. And... Uh, they're not square, so I had to put them on the table saw and kind of square them up a little bit to make them sit up like they were supposed to sit up. But I've just got them sitting here right now to give you an idea of about how it's going to look. I'm doing what's called the button pass on them. Instead of notching uh, the button pass to me, uh, because I'm having to spend so much time cutting them on the table saw and all, I don't have that, you know, I just don't have the time to do all the notching. So we're going to do that button pass. Now, what I'm going to have to do here is I had to figure out a way that I'm going to be locking all of these together. And I had thought about purchasing the big giant screws that just go into two of them at a time, but those things are like almost $3 a piece, the ones that reach far enough into that to do some good. That's too much money for me to spend on anything like this because this thing ended up costing me a thousand dollars time I got through with it. But what I have decided to do, I bought some 3 8 all thread. I'm going to be uh, taking these plates here back up from under the bottom of it. But before I do, I'm going to take my drill bit and I'm going to come in on these and I'm going to drill... Now, the corners, I might do it in the corners. I'm not 100% sure yet, 
but I'm afraid if I do the corners, I'll miss these that's in between that. So I'll probably will come here and here and I'll drill all the way through the plate there into these same thing here all the way around and at the door uh i probably will drill right through right here these all the way down through here and the all thread sticks up six feet high so what i'll do is i'll countersink it under the bottom of the plate there and put a nut and washer on it and each piece i cut will be pre-drilled i'll slide them down over the all thread and when i get up to the height that i want it I'll cut the all thread off and put a nut and washer on it up there and then I'll I'll actually tighten this thing down and it'll squeeze all this stuff together all the way around it. And plus it'll be tied to the treated plate at the bottom which is already bolted into the concrete block so the wind can't blow it off of the blocks. That is how we will be putting the walls up. Now when it comes to the peak part, I will actually be cutting these logs on an angle and them, I will put screws in on them. And then the roof, I'll construct a little bit later on after that. But now we, that's going to be, and then the opening we have here, I have left a 30, uh, 30 inch opening. Well, it's 32, but I'm going to put my little frame in it to put me a 30 inch door in it so that we can open it and be able to get in there to it. Now, I also have constructed the slab out here for the, firebox to go on there will be that piece of stainless steel pipe you see laying over there will go through this hole here that we have poured and into this one here and we'll be laying bricks and fire brick and all that kind of stuff in this bricking it up uh mr tim has built a uh, uh a, well the, actually mr tim built the door for the furnace over yonder i, I bought a door for this right here so this will have a nice cast iron door on it and everything, and, and we'll show these processes when we get there. But that's kind of the gist of it right now. I want to take you along on this phase of it and show you how we're actually doing this right here. Now, I'm not worried about sealing this thing up airtight because it is a smokehouse. <laughs> I mean, I know I want to keep as much smoke in it as I can, but at the same time, I... Uh, it's not going to hurt my feelings if it gets out. Now, what, I'm, what I might do is I might come back and run a bead of caulking down the top of each one of these before I set them down and squeeze them down. But then again, I may not because it's going to take me so long to get these stacked up on the all threads out here. I'd have to have everything pre-cut in order to do it, which and then that may be something that I do. But... I'm not that worried about getting it airtight. So that's where we're at, guys. Um, I want to take you along and show you this phase of building the smokehouse. Thank you, guys, from Pecan Grove.